Good morning, folks. We've got a lot of news here. The biggest solar flare yet, the new sunspots beginning to get active. We've got geophysical news and special items to watch for as well. And we are starting with the last 24 hours on our star using 131 angstroms to show the solar flare activity. Several big ones from the departing spot and one on the left from the new incoming active regions. We're still able to see the flaring of the big one that turned out of view from over the limb here. We'll get a chance to see if it survives the far side in about two weeks. But for now, we have taken the largest solar flare of the entire solar cycle so far. X 8.8 erupted as it turned out of view, and luckily this one was not aimed at Earth. This flare alone was more powerful than the four impacts that triggered the solar storms last weekend. While its CME is going to miss the Earth, its ionization via X-rays lit up the Americas pretty good yesterday, high-frequency radio blackout for about an hour, and a magnetic crochet that disrupted several systems including the official government space weather monitoring and notification system. Where our focus will be moving forward is the incoming active regions, which had a big blast during a long-duration M-Class event yesterday. It happened right after the huge X-Class flare, and so here you can see both CMEs. While the one heading to the right from the departing X 8.8 will miss, it's very difficult to diagnose the one going left. It does look pretty wide, especially when you try to pick out the north and south components, which appear to be crossing the central heliographic longitudes. Enlil spirals not updated, so all we can say is this may be yet another glancing blow coming. Folks, this is interesting. We took the record aurora in this past weekend solar storm. More than 300 network disruptions, a 28 times normal uptick in local infrastructure issues, and this, the GPS system most widely used by agro equipment went down. It often takes days to a few weeks to get all the reports of issues like this, leaves me wondering what else happened that didn't make the news. The volcanoes wanted in on the party as well. Mount Ibu in Indonesia here put on quite the impulsive display. Tall ash cloud and a light show later that evening. Solid pressure and electric capacitance release. Have any of you heard about El Nino waning with La Nina roaring back? Good signature of that here on the west coast of South America. The temperature anomaly shows blue there and... That's your key signature of a developing La Nina. Could be in play by midsummer time. Folks, the Climatistas did it again. Qualitative data they are showing the whole world right now. But what about the quantitative data, the numbers? They're not showing people this map, which tells a very different story. They somehow manage to do this every month, show the world a deep red map with virtually no blue when the numbers say differently every single month. Welcome to Clown World. Folks, You've got a link below to our short interview on InfoWars. It was a really good time with the American Journal team. And the topic was the same as last night's special video. Hopefully many of you watched. And for those who were asking questions in the comment section, seriously, 99% of them can be answered by doing what I suggested you do at the very end of that video. Last but not least, later today, the May issue of Observer Review will come out. This is the best way to stay updated on every major science issue for the month, best way to support this channel as well. Some of the best articles we've ever had are in this issue this month. Sign up at the link below. We greatly appreciate your support. We'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.